the fact is if you see 10 africans together you will find 10 different reasons why people leave the warm comfort of their known environments to move to a sometimes cold and unknown new world africa web tv spoke with five africans who moved to europe for various reasons in the first of our series african lives living in the diaspora we spoke with them about a variety of issues ranging from their motivation for moving to Europe to their first impressions and even about life and death matters. All the people we spoke with are currently living in the Netherlands. We began by asking them why they came to the Netherlands. The reason why I came here was actually to be a uh an engineer. My mother is married to a Dutch guy and they met in Africa and uh, before that we traveled a lot. We went to uh, different countries in uh, Africa and then my stepdad decided to move to, to, uh, to Holland. I came because of my, uh, my boyfriend then who is now my husband. Uh, we met each other uh, in um, almost 10 years ago in South Sudan where I was working and we got to know each other and eventually I had to move here. I chose specifically for Holland because I never wanted to go to the UK or America. That's why I came here, just to start a new life. Um, we came to live here because actually my parents decided um, they wanted us to go to uh, high school here. Yeah, that's the, actually the reason why we moved here. They thought that it was, uh, it was better for us. The people we spoke with came to Europe at different times of their lives. So how old were they when they came to the Netherlands? I was 28 years old, yeah. I was uh, actually 9 years old. I was 35 years old. I came here in March 1995. I was 13 years old, almost um, 14 years old. What were the things that fascinated, surprised, or shock them when they arrived in the Netherlands. The down thing about it is, it's the the language here. Uh, the language, the Dutch language, is not the it's not it's not the easiest language. Um, the first three things they taught me was watch out for the three W's, and that is work, weather, and woman. <laughs> <laughs> and people don't laugh <laughs> and yeah for sure the cold it was so cold it can be summer now but by the time you maybe come outside 50 minutes you start to feel cold wind so the weather is not is uh, not trustworthy it's the way they, they construct the they build the roads and, uh, and, and and streets how they can build it uh, a tunnel through a highway in just three nights in a, in a weekend. You can have a nice job and your boss, colleagues will say, oh, you work good, you work nice. Your boss will say, oh, I like the way you work. I hope you stay with me for long. And then all of a sudden, maybe about one year or so, if you're lucky, say, oh, now business is not good. I think I have to let you go. So your work. It's also not trustworthy. Everything was so neat. The roads, the infrastructure, the buildings, that was really impressive. And, and the other thing was the dogs. That was also fascinating. Like, uh, yeah, I was wondering how, how, how can people treat uh, dogs like babies? That was really something I had never seen before. So everything was clean and <laughs> perfectly uh, made. And again, women, today always love it of you, oh, how sweet honey, I love you, I never do without you. And all of a sudden, maybe one year, it can be six months, it can be weeks, it can be years. I say, yo, I have enough of you. I don't think I need you anymore. So, watch out for the three W's. Very dangerous. <laughs> the lifestyle itself, how, how People live with their kids in, in a way that's free and, and engaging in, in terms of communication and uh, yeah, and all the, the luxury that's here that you, people are able to do. Yeah, that was, uh, that was fascinating. Yeah. And the first thing I remember of that moment was that my, 
grandmother was standing at the airport with all these big jackets and it was really cold. You can't go to the neighbor and just say, oh, I've come for coffee. You have to ask in advance and make an appointment in advance as well. So When I came here, I remember first, it was on a Sunday I was going to church. Me uh, in my suit, you know, nothing wrong with it. I thought I'm decent enough and automatically I saw an old lady and she saw me and automatically she just crossed over to the other side of the road. And I was standing there, what did I do wrong? But then I can't blame them because maybe never saw a good looking black man in the suit before. We cannot dance around the issue. Everyone in Africa has a picture in his or her head about how Europe looks and feels like before they went there. Was Europe how our respondents thought it was while they were still in their countries of origin? I thought it was, it was easy here. Everything was easy to have or money, to have money or to get uh, a job or all those kind of things. But it wasn't actually like that. When I was in Africa, I used to see things on television and you see all the nice things, of course. And that's the image I had. I knew, I mean, life is good. Everybody has a good job. People have money. And, uh, but I didn't, I didn't realize that it's really hard work. Don't come to Europe if you don't have a backup plan. What do the people we spoke with miss most about their own land of birth? Uh, what I miss about Africa, uh, the way people live with um, the less they have. And they try to make the best of it every day. And I really have a big respect for it. In Europe, we have everything, but people don't enjoy it. I miss, of course, I miss, I, I miss my family first, my mom and my brothers and sisters. I miss the social life. I miss the food, uh, especially uh, the fresh food, like just simple things like tomatoes and, um, and the real biological vegetables that you can just pick from your garden. Um, yeah, and, and I, you don't have to make uh, appointments with anybody for, for meeting up. You just meet up and yeah, that's what I miss, but here it's not possible. What I miss about Cameroon, I miss, I miss the people, the, the, the food, of course, and yeah, I miss the family. I miss my Saturdays. We go out, eat, drink, dance. We go home again. Sunday, we rest. Monday, we go back to work. We were free. We were enjoying. We, Saturday, we eat our fufu. Sunday we eat our fried beans of rice and jollof rice. Man, oh man, oh man. I miss that, especially my fufu on Saturdays. I miss the wildlife a lot. Because we used to, I used to live in Mwanza, Tanzania. And we had family all over the place. So actually almost once in two months, we would just travel, go into the wildlife and Yes, I really miss that. Will they ever consider going back to settle in their countries of origin? Hardship or not, there is no place like home. There is no place like home. For me, Holland, I'm grateful. Holland is my second home. Or Europe is my second home because I can stay anywhere in Europe. I'm a European citizen. But nevertheless, originally, I am a son of the soil, a soil union born and bred. So yes, of course, I want to go back. Why not? Yeah, of course, I already have plans going back to uh, Cameroon and uh, start a, a business there. Because I'm not uh, planning in uh, getting old or dying here in Europe. So I want to go back to Africa and start a company there. Then come, uh, if I want to come back here is to visit or on vacation. Yeah, it will be possible uh, when my uh, boy, um, yeah, uh, my, my boy get older. I think I have to, I'm going to move uh, like few months in Africa and uh, back to Holland with my husband or with my, with my son. But uh, it's something we have to decide together with my husband. My ideal uh, thoughts are living here, uh, staying here in the summer 
and then uh, moving back to Africa in the winter hopefully when I'm with pension <laughs> when I've saved enough to have that balance of life six months yeah six months in Africa that would be the most ideal situation for me um, I actually wanted to go back after I think about eight months I was done living here I already wanted to go back but at the moment I have kids so I'm just waiting for them to um, yeah to go uh, get older and when they're on their own I would definitely wanna yeah I definitely wanna go back and live there for many on the outside, it is difficult to imagine that once one has lived, worked and grown old in Europe, they might not want to die and be buried there. Within the African communities in the diaspora, this is always a dilemma. In any case, the issue of preparing for one's own death is a taboo to many Africans. Have the people we spoke with thought about what happens in the event of their own death? If so, where would they want to be buried? I'm really in the limbo. God help me. God will make the decision for me. But if you ask me, I want to be buried in Africa. But then again, if I'm buried in Africa and you know all these dead people, these cops, they'll be chasing me or go to hell. You, you were in Europe while we we're suffering here. What, what are they coming to, to pest us? So maybe they, they won't give me rest in my grave. <laughs> but sincerely, no place like home. But when I'm gone and gone, I'm gone. So it doesn't matter. I hope. I hope I'm, I've made all my uh, arrangements that if something happened, I should be buried in Africa. It's a very difficult question because um, one part I grew up in uh, in Holland and I would like my child or my husband or my other family to to visit me. But um, the second part, I I was born in uh, Africa and I would also like my other family to visit me when I, when I, I lie, I lie on the, under the ground. That's also something I really haven't thought thoroughly about. At some point I thought, yeah, it would be nice mm, that my dead body gets brought back to Kenya, to my family where I belong. But on the other hand, um, like I also belong here and how about the costs of transporting the body is that really necessary to transport a dead body from here to Kenya so I'm now try, uh, trying to think about uh, to think about uh, if I die I mean probably it would be better just to be buried here burnt and buried and that, that's it if I die in Holland where do I want to be buried that's a really good question I've never actually I've never thought about that if I die there, I know exactly where I want to be buried. I would like to be buried next to my uh, grandfather, on my grandfather's land. My grandfather was like, yeah, he was a very important person to me, so that would be pretty cool. In the next episodes, Africa Web TV will explore how Africans view their lives in the diaspora. However, in rounding up this episode, we asked two of the participants if they had any message to people back in Africa, what will the message be? People, people, my brothers and sisters, if you have your bread and butter in Africa, even if you don't have bread and butter, you have rice and palm oil. Eat it, go to sleep, live a nice life, you're free. I usually tell them, but they, some, some people who have never been here, they don't believe it. I usually say it's not all gold. It's hard work, it's stress, and it's yeah we don't pick money from the trees like people think you know europe is not luxury some of us work more than 12 hours a day you wake up four o'clock in the morning some of the some of, some of us don't see our bed until after midnight when i came here i realized it's really hard work it's working day and night last night i worked until 11 o'clock this morning i was up at six i started working at seven up to 11 so that's really hard work money doesn't come for nothing the luxury comes with a price on it please be cautious if you're coming to europe get your story straight plan properly i don't say don't come because you say yeah you're diana you don't want me to enjoy you don't want me to get better it is a free world. I'm a king, yes, I'm a king, go what? Think. I'm a king, go.